All right, this is Peter with CalcBook, and today we're going to be talking about lateral torsional buckling. So what is lateral torsional buckling? Um, so it's a really a combination of lateral displacement and twisting of the section under load, right? So you can have a, a positive bending, your, your compression flange is going to be that top flange, and that's going to buckle during bending, or in negative bending, your bottom flange would be in compression, and that would buckle uh, for lateral torsional buckling. And this can occur in both beams and beam columns. So we'll take a look at our beam here. We can see the dashed line is the original shape, and then the solid line is the shape after lateral torsional buckling occurs. And you can see that we have a lateral displacement as well as a twisting of the cross section. So what causes lateral torsional buckling? Well, two things to start. We have our unbraced length and our slenderness, right? So if you s look at the graph there going from left to right, you can see that as you get longer and more slender, you're going to have more and more uh, lateral torsional buckling. And then also our bending moment, right? What type of loading is applied to the beam um, affects uh, the lateral torsional buckling capacity. So you can see this comes out in our CB factor, right? So for a distributed load, we have less capacity. And then for a point load, we have more capacity. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example problem. We're going to be looking at a W10 by 45. This is an A992 steel. Our unbraced length is going to be 15 feet, right? So it's completely unbraced. And our ultimate moment is 115 kip feet. Uh, and this comes from a distributed load. So we'll go ahead and take a look and verify the capacity of the beam. So we're going to open up CalcBook, right? We're going to go ahead and go into our steel design module. We're going to take a look at our member design. And then we're going to go into flexure about the major axis. And so we're going to select our shape here. We have a W section. It's a W10 by 45. And the values for our, uh, our yield properties uh, have al already populated based on this shape selection. Then we go into our flexure design tab. We want to select what type of bracing we have, right? We can either do fully braced or we want to enter our length, right? And we want to enter an unbraced length of 15 feet. And if you want to know some more information about that, about what we're asking, you can open this tooltip here. Um, we're looking for obviously the, the brace points of the compression flange. Um, and in this case, we have the full length of the beam. So we're just going to enter in 15 feet. And then we want to go ahead and update our CB factor, right? And we're going to go ahead and scroll down here. We have a distributed load and we have no bracing. So we're going to use 1.14. Okay, well now we've got all of our uh, inputs entered. We can go ahead and take a look at the calculation. So we're going to go ahead and check for slender elements first. And we determine that our flange is compact. And then we can go down and check our web and our web is compact. So we can go ahead and use chapter F2. We want to check our uh, nominal yielding moment, which is 2,745 kip inch. And then we also want to take a look at now our lateral torsional buckling. Right, so we determine what our LP factor is and our LR factor. And then we want to figure out where our unbraced length falls. And in this case, we fall in between LP and LR. So we're controlled by inelastic lateral torsional buckling. And then from there, we can calculate what the moment uh, capacity is due to lateral torsional buckling, which we see is just less than our yield moment. So our design flexural strength is going to be controlled by lateral torsional buckling of 199.7 kip feet. So that's lateral torsional buckling uh, utilizing CalcBook software.